you know, Biden, we had all this nonsense during the Democratic primary, Biden, Buddha judge, whatever the hell Col now Vice President Harris's plan was, you know, Medicare for all who wanted and you know, all this uh, that if, you, you know, we cannot risk the sacred private health care. We need to give people the option of their private health care. Well, we saw during the COVID what a wonderful option that is uh, because millions and millions of people lost their private health care uh, because of the insane system we have that ties it to employment. So you have that in one bucket. Then Biden said, well, we're going to do a public option. So kind of verbally moving a little bit left. Uh, that has been completely abandoned. You hear nothing about it, no language about it at all. In fact, if the Build Back Better plan even becomes a thing, I mean, as we record this, uh, it's coming out that Manchin is trying to take the child tax credit out and it's basically dead for now. Uh, but Medicare expansion has been basically cut. Maybe you'll get hearing expansion, but they're going more towards Obamacare, uh, additional Obamacare subsidies, which I think we would agree is the wrong way to go. Uh, so all of this is happening. We, we've we seen, keep you know, we want people to keep their private health care plan. That has been exposed during this pandemic. Biden has walked away from the public option. They're throwing more money at Obamacare. And now this, I mean, I, I don't want to equate, I don't want to do false equivalencies, but on health care, at least, what really makes the Democratic Party so different <laughs> than the Republican Party right now? It seems like there is no difference. Well, in fact, you're right. There's a bipartisan consensus that was expressed by some of these Medicare uh, officials in a meeting that they had with physicians for a national health program that, hey, single payer would have been great. Medicare for all would have been great if we had started that. But it's too late now and Congress is never going to approve it. And the fact is, Jordan, the reason that we don't have a, a real fight and now probably the reason that we actually don't have Medicare for all is because the Democratic Party refuses to fight for it and implement it. And the fact is, is that since 1992, even the organized labor movement has backed off from their traditional commitment to a social insurance healthcare program, Medicare for all. So the primary institutional forces on the center left that would be, you know, and have been historically pushing this program have abandoned it. And of course, you're exactly right. It's not just that, that President Biden abandoned the public option, he abandoned the program that would have leveled the playing field between traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage. If you expand the benefits, eliminate out-of-pocket costs, lower the eligibility age, all of which he campaigned on, right? If you had done all that, you wouldn't have the incentive for people to choose these private Medicare Advantage plans, and there certainly wouldn't be the push to do these direct contracting entities. So the, the fact is, is that even an incremental improvement of Medicare would substantially improve and stop, improve the program and stop privatization. So I don't know, it's a matter of degree. The Affordable Care Act was a Republican idea from a Republican governor, from a Republican think tank. The notion that we're going to uh, continue to subsidize private insurance in the face of, of, as you say, the wholesale inadequacy of it during a pandemic uh, is, of course, um, ludicrous from a, from a caregiving point of view, from a policy point of view, from even a fiscal responsibility point of view. It's much cheaper to do Medicare for all. And yet we have this notion that only the private sector uh, can, can you know, pay for and, and, and manage health care. No other country does it. And yet somehow we're supposed to believe that it's the best and only way here in the U.S., well, you mentioned cheaper, and I want to uh, toss to this clip. I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, um, I mean, she was asked a basic question by an NPR reporter, and you know, certainly not you know, a far left loon. Uh, hey, why don't we just provide why don't we just provide at home tests to all Americans? Here we go. Look at what we've done over the course of time. We've quadrupled the size of our testing plan. We've cut the cost significantly over the past few months. And this effort to uh, to push uh, to ensure insurers are you're able to get your your tests uh, refunded means 150 million Americans will be able to get free tests. That's not complicated though. Why not just make them free and give them out to, and have them available everywhere? Should we just send one to every American? 
Maybe. Then, then, what ha then what happens if, you, if every American has one test? How much does that cost? And then what happens after that? No, all I know is that other countries seem to be making them available for, in greater quantities for less money. Well, I think we share the same objective, which is to make them less expensive and more accessible, right? Uh, every country is going to do that differently. And I was just noting that, again, our tests go through the FDA approval process. You could tell by her response, it, it's just she can't even fathom the thought of it being free. Like, whoa, how much is that going to cost? What not? Putting aside the moral deficiencies in that, that they're associating costs with how many lives we could save, um, wouldn't it save money in the long run? Because if you had a system where as soon as you, you know, feel sick, even if it's kind of like cold symptoms, you could quickly get a test. If you're positive, you quarantine. Obviously, COVID, there are asymptomatic too, but we're seeing more and more with the Delta variant, now Omicron. I mean, most of it is some symptoms uh, if you're vaccinated, more, you know, more mild symptoms. Wouldn't that save more money because you're, you know, better uh, and quicker quarantine, meaning less transmission, meaning less economic disruption? Exactly. Less, uh, yeah, fewer days missed from work, uh, obviously less exposure to others, as you say, transmission. But the fact is, is that um, these at-home tests are not, you know, cheap for individuals, but if they were to be mass purchased, mass produced by the government, the individual cost would be minimal. You know, and you've got, uh, in fact, if you had an early test within the first three days, you can become eligible for this Pfizer, uh, new Pfizer pill that's 83% effective. So you can avoid hospitalizations even on, uh, among the unvaccinated, which of course are driving hospitalizations. Those are hugely expensive. Six, seven figure uh, ICU stays are not uncommon for severe COVID patients, besides the fact of other people being displaced and not getting the care they need. The human cost of this uh, both in terms of, of health, life, and treasure is enormous. And it always makes sense to provide benefits on a universal public basis, it, especially if they're free. We know that very even small out-of-pocket costs for individuals can deter care and deter access. I mean, at least 25% of Americans each year don't use some health care because they can't afford it. A lot of that's because it's out-of-pocket costs are high. So it makes imminent sense. And the fact is, as you say, that these policymakers and their spokespeople in Washington can't even conceive of universal public programs tell you how skewed the debate is toward the market, the so-called free market, privatization, and profit-making. And when it comes to health care, it literally costs lives.